Hello all, thank you for dropping into this um, community and, and practice time together. We're sort of continuing a theme from last week that we began, I think, I think I, what did I even call it? Crossing the floods, pretty sure if, you, if you're um, looking for kind of the, this, this continued theme that is, uh, we're continuing with this week. And uh, so that was the first recording of it. And um, hmm. in brief, we we're talking about what practices, what mindsets, what states of awareness help us to not be pulled under by the currents of our unseen habits and forces. Uh, what practices help us to cross over what are called the floods, the, I, I, I find the image of undercurrents helpful or, you know, it's like spring here and, the, and there's a dam further up the river from where I'm living and they, they open up that dam to regulate all the thawing and the rain and, and so there's a real connection with the, all the, the rivers are quite full and flowing and so I can really feel that sense of how life can just sweep us along and we get swept into reactivity not even sure why why we're so reactive about something um, and there's four floods in particular that we talked a bit more in that first recording so you could check that one out but I'll um, just name them here the first one is the flood of sensuality um, that constant grasping for what we think will bring us happiness and peace and lasting satisfaction and then the flood of becoming where we're really a, a t holding on to a sense of identity of who who i am and who i have been and therefore who i expect to become and this can be positive views or negative views of ourselves and the flood of views which is a very prevalent one these these days but probably always of clinging to our beliefs and views and dogmas and speculations opinions that stop us from hearing each other, from being in conversation, from learning, from inquiring. Um, it, it stops all discussion and investigation when we're really clinging to our view and, and, and can, in the extreme, create war. Then the, the last flood is called the flood of ignorance, which is underlying all of the floods. It's like the the most fundamental, the, it, which means not seeing clearly, not understanding clearly the way um, how things are. Um, so these four things, these four floods, hmm, really, it, well, okay, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to it. <laughs> um, yeah, so last week we ended the, the conversation and the talk with um, this little piece that I'll start with here, which is from the teachings, uh, one of the stories in the teachings from the time of the Buddha, and where someone came uh, after Siddhartha Gautama, human being like us, uh, mm, became what we now call the Buddha, meaning awakened one, which is um, somebody who has crossed over these floods to the further shore. And so then someone approaches and says, how did you do that? Um, Dear sir, how did you cross the flood or floods? And the reply was, by not halting, friend, and by not straining, I crossed the flood, which is kind of a, a bit of a, 
un mildly unsatisfactory answer. Like, oh, come on, give me more, <laughs> right? What does that mean? And so they, they ask further, okay, but how is it that by not halting and by not straining, you cross the flood? And then uh, he says further, when I came to a standstill friend, then I sank. Uh, but when I struggled, then I got swept away. Uh, and another translation I read today said, um, then I got whirled about, you know, so you could, you could, I can really picture this now with these full rivers that, um, you know, if I um, push too quickly or um, hmm, strain to get across that river, uh, I would be whirled about or swept away. And if I didn't keep steadily with resolve moving forward, but also with patience, um, then I would could sink or um, also get pulled under. And so he says in this way, friend, that by not halting or staying in place and by not straining or pushing, that is how I crossed the flood. Um, so th this brings to mind for me two qualities in particular, patience and resolve. And they, at first glance, kind of sound like opposites, um, patience and then also determination or resolve. And they are certainly different energies, but they, 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 can be a great support in crossing the flood, you know, because it, the patience um, to go slowly, mindfully, attentively, not rushing across, but also the resolve and the determination to continue, uh, not too quickly, but not standing still. And um, it's interesting to, you know, bring this into our, our reality, our, our personal life. What does patience mean to you? And it, it's interesting because for me, it, this is not a strong suit. <laughs> and so this is why it's really important for me to practice with it and inquire with it and and undertake this. And I have been for several weeks now, um, really keeping that intention in, in the fore for myself. And I've learned a, a lot and mostly by paying attention to impatience, <laughs> feeling what does impatience feel like in this body, heart, mind, and it's a powerful force and a pretty regular visitor in this system at this time, but that's always changing as well. But to, to really, I can feel when I really keep reminding myself, check this out, is there impatience here? Or sometimes I notice it because they're already feeling, eh, that pushing into the next moment energetically or I, I remember even physically this is some years back now but I remember this <laughs> it's embarrassing to say but um at the grocery store in Fergus and I, yeah, I must have been in some kind of a pissy mood but I, I was just standing in line to check out I don't think I even had anywhere urgent or important to to be in a timely way but I was just like I and I remember the feeling of moving my body up towards the person that was standing in front of me just to energetically push them it's so annoying like it's so obnoxious I can't believe I'm admitting it and um 
but I knew that's what I was doing. I, was, I could feel like I'm just trying to push for no reason. And it, but it, you know, at least I felt it and knew that's what I was doing and then was able to like, whoa, whoa, honey, honey, and offer them some metta, may you be safe, may I be peaceful, which is a common practice for me now in the grocery line at the grocery store. But uh, yeah, so, but, but even just within myself, when there's like a little boredom or a little aversion, um, whatever mind state, whatever flood is, is, is propelling, pushing, there's this sense of leaning into the next moment, like, just, just hurry this up. Let's get, get to something else. And so feeling that sensation in the body is, has been freeing because when I just feel like, oh, that's what's happening. It's just impatience. It releases. It, it can let go when, when it's not just happening as an undercurrent, when it's known. And what that is, is usually a flood of the flood of becoming or of views, you know, don't like what I'm hearing or, or whatever is happening or I want to be something else or somewhere else or whatever. So just for myself, knowing what that undercurrent is, feeling the sensations of it, it, it lets go a little bit and gives me the chance to not be reactive, but respond. Then I can pause, respond to a little more skillfully, hopefully sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I read this um, awesome quote, and I can't cite who it was because it was um, a comment on a poetry blog. So it was like um, uh, reading somebody's poem, and then people comment on the poem. And uh, somebody wrote, um, if we eternally lived in the moment, the word patience would not exist. That's so good, right? Wow. If we eternally lived in the moment, patience would not exist. We wouldn't, if we were just like, hey, it's like this right now. Here I am in this moment. Um, there wouldn't be impatience. And then the word patience wouldn't exist. There. Oh, good. It's gone clear again. My video went fuzzy there. Um, and so, Check it out for yourself. If that's a tendency, you're feeling impatient with yourself, with others, with your life, with the world. Um, see if you can, through your practice, through your awareness, through your journaling, whatever your tools are, through feeling the sensation of it, like, oh, what? Oh, that's impatience. When you feel these muscles get ready, kicking up, you know, or your fingers gripping, or I feel it sometimes in my thighs and buttocks where I'm just like getting ready to, to go. The gripping can happen in your belly. So just notice if that's a tendency for you. And if you can just start labeling it, just start knowing it like, oh, that's impatience. And see what happens in that moment of knowing it. Does it release a little bit? And if it doesn't release, take a look at how you've got your hooks into something. <laughs> it's not letting go because you're holding on. Yeah. And it doesn't work anyways. <laughs> we can't push the river. And keep trying but you know everything has its rhythm its time and we just and then so then we moderate that with that second it's called a parami or perfection of determination resolve 
of um, our intention, particularly this is referring to our intentions around our practices of awakening and freeing our hearts and minds, where we steadily continue and begin again over and over. So it might be something to reflect on. What is a helpful resolve for you at this time? What is your, what, what's the underlying mm, support that will keep guiding you through steadily, gently with patience? This is one that's offered by a teacher named Ajahn Suchito, S-U-C-I-T-T-O. And he said, may this action or thought be for my welfare, the welfare of others and lead to peace. It's a beautiful resolve. May this action or thought be for my welfare, for the welfare of others and lead to peace. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> hmm. So this, the, these come, these two patience and resolve can really see us through these painful states of mind, physical pain, emotional stress. Um, Yeah. Let's see if there's anything else I want to say about that. Let me just see. I think. Yeah. I think I don't want to go into that. There's another piece. Let me just see. Nope. Let it go. Oh, there. <laughs> Sorry, I don't usually refer to so much paper, but I'm tired tonight, so uh, I am. Uh huh. I'll just say another thing about patience here, or um, persistence, the determination, the resolve part that. In this context, it's not. It's it's based on. It has an intention based on our values, based on our values of loving kindness, compassion, care, renunciation, freedom, letting go. These are these are considered the skillful ways to really be directing our our energy. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have a practice now where we practice this beginning again, our resolve with patience. And um, once we get settled into our posture, I'm going to start with a poem, one of my favorite poems. It's called Trough. I'll put it here. I'll put it in the YouTube uh, recording. Um, some of you have heard it before. I'm just putting it into the Zoom room here for folks that are on Zoom. It's called Trough by Judy Brown. And uh, I'll put it under the YouTube recording as, as well. So check the link below if you're interested. It's a really beauty. It's a beauty. Okay, so this is our time to cultivate these practices within our body, within our heart and mind, so that it can carry us through in our daily lives when, when it's really needed. So let's come into a posture that feels supportive for your practice tonight. If you're experiencing pain, you may need to lay down to practice. And if you're our intention is uh, intentions of awakening. So when you're laying down, you might want to lift up a forearm or bend your knees so that the movement of falling asleep will wake you up again. If there's a lot of sleepiness for you, you might practice standing 
or sitting forward from the back of your chair the way I am so that it's not too comfortable and too uh, sleep inducing basically. As you're starting to find your posture, uh, see if there's any other movements you need to release any tension or stress, any movements of the head or neck or shoulders. Depending on your energy tonight and how your heart and mind is, you might like to dim your lights or turn away from the computer and just let the sounds uh, support you. Some people find it helpful to settle by closing the eyes and others find it helpful to keep the eyes a little bit open, just looking downward, bringing in a little bit of light, but with a soft gaze if your eyes are open. And as we're coming into stillness, we just begin to notice what's here now. How is your energy? How is the body and mind and heart? And then just feeling the muscles of the face and noticing if there's tension there that might be helpful to release. Often in the eyes or forehead, or maybe the mouth or jaw. It's also okay to just feel any tension that's there and not needing to release it. Some uh, find it helpful to just hold some energy there and just to know that that's okay as well. I'm just letting go of anything that isn't needed right now. It can be that feeling an expression of peace in the face brings some ease to the heart. Feeling the sides and the back of the neck lengthen as the shoulders slide down. See if your body needs any sighing breaths to bring some release to the inner layers of the belly. Then allow yourself to feel the weightedness of the bones, of the pelvis, the legs, feet, really grounding, resting, steady. And as we we're sharing this context of the crossing the floods. I'll offer this poem called The Trough by Judy Brown. There is a trough in waves, a low spot where the horizon disappears 
and only sky and water are our company. And there we lose our way unless we rest, knowing the wave will bring us to its crest again. There we may drown if we let fear hold us in its grip and shake us side to side, and leave us flailing, torn, disoriented. But if we rest there in the trough, in silence, being in the low part of the wave, keeping our energy and noticing the shape of things, the flow. Then time alone will bring us to another place where we can see the horizon, see land again, regain our sense of where we are, and where we need to swim. So here we are in the silence, resting, not fighting against whatever is here. And so to develop some more calm and stability, we could choose a a place to rest our attention and it could be just with the body, the whole body in this moment, feeling whatever is arising for you. Resting, not fighting. Or it may be helpful for you to rest your attention with the waves of breath. Coming and going, rising and falling. We rest into those waves. Allow them to carry us, to show the way. And then you might bring in your resolve, your determination, your intention. Why are you here? Why are you doing this practice? And perhaps feeling inspired by what was offered earlier. May this action of meditation, 
May this action or thought be for my welfare, the welfare of others, and lead to peace. There may be other words that resonate for you. Feel the energizing of of that resolve. Feel the determination. To continue gently moving forward. If you feel your energy or attention sinking, bring in that resolve. And if you feel yourself pushing into a future moment in your mind or your body, and getting bored or leaning into some future, then we bring in a little more patience. Over and over, we begin again, breath by breath, step by step, crossing the flood.
If we eternally lived in the moment, the word patience would not exist. By not stopping or ceasing or staying in place and by not blindly pushing forward, beginning again. May this practice be for our welfare, for the welfare of others, and lead to peace. to add an, um, another thought here, a clarification that patience is not about pass being passive, passivity. 
It's not about procrastination or resignation. Patience is actually has an action to it. It's something that's cultivated. It's engaged. It's observant. It's it's like um, you know the way I was describing it in my personal experience of just noticing impatience. There's an intention. There's an action of turning my attention to the sensations of the body and, and mind states and noticing impatience and um, it's observant and and engaged so just wanted to clarify that that patience doesn't just mean like resignation like oh well nothing i can do about it and just wait till something else happens yeah so just wanted to add a little note about that so um for those that have joined us on the YouTube recording, thank you for tuning in. Check out that poem I'll post down down below. And um, we won't be on for, um, I, I won't be here for uh, the next eight weeks until June 8th. Seems so far away, but um, and because uh, we'll be doing a, a course on the Poetry of Awakening um, still has some spaces available, so I'll probably put the link down below if you would like to join us in that. It's an online course um, that will be happening on these Wednesday nights because that was the only time I could find eight weeks uh, consecutively. Uh, so hope to uh, share practice with you again.